See, and that's what I'm talking about. There are differences, and they're not subtle. It's it's identity. Yes. Now let's get into you a little bit, because you also shouted out the original flavor unit. You can shout them out right now. Yo, shout out to the original flavor unit. Uh, Chill Rob G, Lakim Shabazz of DJ C Just King Son. Uh, yo, was Mark just, the Forty Five King in there? Mark the Forty Five King. I can forget about you, peace, bro. Yeah, yeah. All right. So see. The thing about hip hop is hip hop not only is organic, it's a lifestyle. It's life giving, it's life taking, unfortunately. Tell me about you though. Like you said you were rapping a little bit, but when I see you, you're not rapping. Oh yeah, okay. So I, I DJ, I DJ, I produce, I rap, I used to dance. Uh, you know, group dance, not stripper dance. I used to dance like kid and play back in there. I did the kid and play thing. I used to do electric boogie on the cardboard and all that. Um, but DJing, I got that definitely from my brother. So I, I really started off DJing first when I, when I was in Newark. I remember I, was, I came from uh, Newton Street School and I went to Central. And I remember my grandmother, I told my grandmother I wanted some DJ equipment. And she got me two linear tech turntables and a mixer from wherever, RJ Music Store, RJ and R Music, whatever. And at the time, uh, Mr. Cream, Marky, he, he had a he had a brother and a cousin. His brother name was Greg, who I used to DJ with, and he had a, uh, another cousin named Daryl. His cousin named Daryl, we used to call him Chop Me. Chop Me had equipment, and I wound up becoming like the neighborhood DJ. Uh, so I was one of the original DJs at Club Little Shields back in the day. I don't know if y'all remember that with uh, Mr. Green. That's where I met Sean Bless, uh, Soul Digger from uh, Peace to Shop to Sean Bless, but. The DJing came from my brother. I, I love the way that, I love the mix. I always love sound. I love um, funk, definitely. So it was DJing at Club Little Shells. It was DJing in neighborhood parties. It was DJing in Central, the, the high school parties. And when Branchville Park Skating Rink opened up, I was one of the, the original DJs there uh, when it started. But that's how I kind of was known more for DJing. I wasn't really known for rapping until later. So yeah, that's that's how that happened. I was DJing first, and then I wound up started rapping. And then I kind of like went back to DJing. So check this out: the DJ is the pulse of hip hop, while the MC is the mouthpiece. Yes. It seems like hip hop has been kind of, kind of not dead, cause Nas and De La Soul kind of touched on that. Mm -hmm. Hip hop's been kind of in rigor mortis, mm -hmm. not fully dead, but it's getting stiff. Right. And the rigor is set is set set in because the pulse of the game has been kind of pushed to the back. Right. The DJ became the producer, and the live show mm -hmm. was about who's in front of the, who's on the mic instead of the person who's setting the MC up for the crowd. Right. As you see that from behind the turntables, what do you think it's gonna take to bring the pulse back so that it is just as viable as the MC? The, what, what has to happen is that the, the DJ and the MC, we gotta take it back to the old school, you know what I mean? The, the show aspect, the performance aspect, the being on stage, you know, um, having a stage show where you can incorporate, you know, the DJ and the MC working together as one. Back in the day, it was about the DJ. It was it was the DJ, then it was the rapper. Uh, DJ, Jazzy Jeff, Fresh Prince, you know, Eric B and Rakim, you know, Eric B was the DJ. Um, it was all about the DJ, but to answer your question, it would have to take, it would have to take the, the passion to just want to get back to, you know, not go all the way back, but to bring certain elements of the old school back where the DJ and the MC work together to make the crowd go nuts. You know? But is that possible when you got celebrities becoming DJs and using Serratos to, oh, to do parties where you got Kid Capri Who's a known DJ who could have crates and he could he could come and do his thing. Even if he doesn't use crates no more, he got the Serato. Yeah. He still knows how to manipulate the sound and the techniques of the records yeah. and not just do a playlist. You know what's funny? Today I just friend requested one of the, the one of the illest DJs that I know. I look up to him. He was popping when, when I was a kid. He's still popping to me right now. Is DJ Cool Look. And when I went on Kulu's page, one of the first posts that I saw him post was, and it made me laugh, was like, everybody's a DJ now. You know, technology has made it easy for 
everybody to be a DJ. You could go get you a DJ in a box, go get the top 20 hot songs that's hot right now with a little bit of sound effects, the bombs like Funkmaster Flex and anything, and you are automatically a DJ. Mm. The art of DJing has been, oh my God, it's, it's just been so whipped out of shape and it's just, it sucks. Mm. I say it sucks. I hope nobody take it offensive, but I do. I'm 44. I think I can speak on that. I think I'm valid to speak on that shit because I see it for myself. I see DJs popping up. I see, I, I go to these parties with these kids. They let the song play like for a second, two to three seconds. When they switch it to something else. It don't make any sense, uh, tempo wise. Um, I blame that shit on technology. I love Serato. You know, Serato is cool, you know, uh, I'm dealing with some, I'm, I just got some new equipment and I was talking to my girl, I was like, damn, but you know, like, I really want to do the turntables with the Serato and he's like, she's like, nah, like, start off with this. Like, I'm DJing off of flash drives now, I got the, uh, the Pioneer uh, Red, Red Recorder mm -hmm. and it allows me to use my flash drive. I don't even need a laptop with it, mm -hmm. but I, I miss the feel of the turntable. Mm -hmm. The DJ controls the atmosphere. He has the ability to make you sad, he has the ability to make you happy. The ability to make you go crazy. A song like Throw Your Guns in the Air with Onyx. I remember we used to throw that shit on. We used to go nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, that's what the, that's what a, a real and a true DJ is. I really don't want to get into the whole real DJ shit, you know, but at the end of the day, technology, all these programs have made it easy for it. Basically, anybody could be a DJ now, and they don't have to do no studying. They don't have to do, you know, like I said, they could download the top. You could Google shit now, like, hey, what's the top uh, 10 hits now that DJs are playing, and you'd be surprised. But that shit that you said about, like, all the select, that shit irked my nerves, man. Sit down. And it's not fair, you know, because you, you, you got you popping because you a rapper or you an actor or whatever and then you just become a DJ you you know you automatically gonna get that I think I seen a video of a Paris Hilton DJing one time mm -hmm. at a spot and she was faking there was a fucking uh, background sound check while she's doing because what she was doing with her hands with the knobs and shit made no sense that's how you could tell a real DJ we could look at it at a person and we know if they really doing anything or not I watched these all these DJs with the knob turning and and you know it yeah, we, we have to preserve and we have to like try to get back to the essential elements of what DJing is. And shout out to all my brothers as DJs, DJ Porn, DJ Rhino, um, DJ Cool Lou, uh, DJ Marcy, the Pina, the shout out to all the Jersey DJs. Well, you don't have to say they suck, because I will. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, let me tell you why I say they suck. I have an ear for hip hop, mm. but I am damn sure not a DJ. And you can ask my partner, I think my playlist is pretty good. <laughs> but that's not being a DJ. You know what frustrates the hell out of me? What's that? When I go to a place where they play music and people don't have good transitions between songs, my man, I heard, oh, what was it? I heard <laughs> when Doves Cry oh my God. mixed to. Uh, what was it? Um, move the crowd. And I was like, how the hell did you do that? Wow. And that it was no... Totally made no sense. There was no transition. The transition, it was like song, song. It was even like a... It didn't, you know, no scratching, <laughs> no mixing. It was like when Doves crowd, dun, 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 boom, 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 boom. I was like, yo, that's two different types of moves. Two, two different types of moves. You can't. I mean, how many times have we gone somewhere? And it was like, yo, he messed up the whole... <laughs> Joint, and I want to give a shout out to my man DJ Show Off because he's the DJ of the Comic Cons and those conventions. Ah, uh, what's and, up? And when he does that, you remember the songs that was played. Yeah. I've gone to conventions with his DJs, and I don't even remember a damn song, <laughs> yeah. and that's crazy because it's like, what did the DJ do? He just played music. I could put on a CD and just play music. Mm. What is the number one talent of a DJ that you think makes a DJ a DJ and not a music player? The number is, is knowing the crowd, knowing the tempo, um, knowing the transitions, like you said, know, knowing how to transition, um, letting the song, I can't say that too tough. I was going to say let a song play until like the second or third verse, you know, but basically the, it's the simplicity of DJing is just, you know what the people like, you, you catch the people off guard when you do something 
that's amazing. The shot value of a DJ is a great thing too because you hear, like I try to do that incorporate in my sets. Like if you catch me at Lincoln Park, I'll throw some shit on you probably forgot about. Um, I, I'm a heavy funkster. And that's another thing too is that you have, there's different DJs. You got, the, you got your house music DJ, they be rocking. I got to give it to the house community because they, they got their own thing. See, that's a whole vibe. You got your reggae DJ. You got, even now with the, the Afro beats now, is, is the thing now. With that, now that every DJ Marcy, you know, with the Forza, with the Afro beat thing going on now. You got your hip hop DJs. You got your WBLS old school DJs where they play break beats. That's what I do too. I, I'm a break beat, funk, uh, old school hip hop kind of DJ. That's my lane. I know my lane. I'm comfortable with it. I don't even like playing trap. I don't even like playing it. And a lot of my friends, they know that. I'll play it if I'm doing a party, and that's what is, you know, I try not, I even avoid certain situations with parties. Like, I don't want to play for young people. I know it sounds crazy, right? You don't want to make no, no money. You I get your it. niche. I've, I got my niche, I stay in my lane, and I'm comfortable. One of my favorite DJs, too, is DJ Tamil. Anthrax, it's, it's my brother. And he's doing amazing shit now because. You know, Tamil came from, he came from us, like we all came up in the same thing, but he knew his lane. Tamil damn near developed a whole new style of club, you know, with, with the DJ and, and what he was doing. But I think that should be the number one thing to look for what makes a good DJ, just knowing your crowd, knowing what you're doing, knowing, just, and staying in your lane, you know. There's, I know there's DJs now that's just doing shit just because it's hot. Like if you play, Afro beats, I think that's what you should stick with, dude. Don't leave hip hop alone. You're not, you don't even know what to play. You're gonna, you're gonna play with the radio's playing. Right. That irks my nerves. Right. DJs that just play the same shit that the radio play. That's annoying. We hear it on the radio 25 times in, in an hour. Like, why you gotta play that shit? You know what I mean? And uh, two, I just believe it's the, it's the, it is the hypnotism of people. People had damn near the Pod Pod Piper out over this trap shit. You know, the, the, the vibe of the music has changed now. The, it's been like that. It's ash. My, my, my opinion. No, no, it, it, it is. And it, it's, 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 everything's changed. The vibe has changed now. The shit is slow. It's heavy subwoofer, heavy bass. You don't even gotta listen to the lyrics because now everybody's hypnotized to the beat. And that's kind of crazy because I know I said earlier, that's how I like came involved. But this shit, is totally like the you could be talking about popping pills and kids. The kids don't even give a fuck. It's the beat, you know. It's that pop pipe and shit, <clears throat> you know. But I hope I answered your question. You did, and I'm gonna, I want to go. I want to go here with it. In hip hop, people get mad over the generations. I really don't, because there's some good guys out there. You it it gotta, is. You gotta find them. But when you listen to them, they say they study the old school. Do DJs study old school DJs? And how far do they go back? <sighs> do DJs study old school DJs? I, I would hope so. I would hope that a good DJ would reference, like, why did you start DJing? Who was your influence? Who, you know what I'm saying? It should be that way. So but wait, unfortunately. Let me ask you this question. Okay. Now how come when we talk about hip hop, we only go back to Grandmaster Flash, Who cool Hurt, I, Ben Bobby, <clears throat> but we never talk about Grandmaster Flowers. Flowers. Wow. Back then. wow. Once again, I think I think what that is is just we're used to that. We're used to going, hey, who's a cool hurt? Grandmaster Flash, you know. Um people don't know a lot of us don't know the culture. A lot of us don't know hip hop history. You know, like I said, DJ Cheese. DJ Cheese wasn't really known known back then because of the cool hurts and the DJ Grandmaster Flash, people, you know, like people are used to what was shoved down their throat at that time, unfortunately. Oh, so you know? HIS, his story told yeah. and was dictated. See, now you, what, like even you said mentioning DJ Flowers, that's powerful right there. That speaks volumes about your taste in hip hop. Just for you mentioning that, that's what it would take. It would take people with, your, with that mindset. It would take that. Well, shout out to Chuck D, because he taught me. <laughs> shout out to Chuck. What's up, Chuck D? <laughs> so, I feel that. So, let's end this on this question, because we're going to have, a, you're going to give me two more parts after this. We're going to go to part six, probably. But, I want to ask you this, then. When the DJ became the producer, did that elevate the DJ, or did it diminish the DJ? Uh, 
I would believe so. I believe the I believe that DJs that become producers, it, it is a, a next level thing. It has to be. Because you go from putting your set list together for your performance to actually sitting in the studio and coming up with some some joints, you know? So I believe so, it, it is the next level of uh, learning and your, your craft, you know? The DJ know, knows what he likes, so I'm pretty sure a good DJ makes a great producer because they already know what they like, you know? They know what, they, they know what their drums sound like, they know what they want the sample to sound like, they know what the, the timing, you know? Yes, I would agree with that.